The space shuttle could get all the way to space on its own power whenever it launched from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. But when a shuttle orbiter travels from one place to another here on Earth, it needs a lift, a piggyback ride or ferry flight aboard the shuttle carrier aircraft. It's an unusual sight, a low-flying jumbo jet with a spaceship bolted onto its back. And it's uh, really amazing to see, first the orbiter in person, it's almost surreal. The shuttle carrier aircraft is actually a Boeing 747, modified to handle the weight and drag of the shuttle orbiter on its back. It's been supporting the space shuttle program ever since the approach and landing test during the late 1970s. In 1990, NASA added an additional modified 747 to its SCA fleet to make a total of two aircraft available for ferry flights. The shuttles began all their space careers with ferry flights when they were first delivered to Kennedy for the manufacturing plant in Palmdale, California. But most of the time, a ferry flight was needed to bring a shuttle back from Edwards Air Force Base in California, following a landing on the west coast due to poor weather in Florida. So they built the 747, they built a very nice airplane, and it, it does what you want when you fly it. The only thing that's different is when you're carrying the orbiter, there is a noticeable vibration, and of course the speeds are quite a bit higher, but as far as the feel in the aircraft and the ease with which the aircraft flies, it is deceptively easy. After an end of mission landing at Edwards, it took the landing team about a week, weather permitting, to prepare it for its upcoming cross-country trip. tail cone was installed to reduce aerodynamic drag and turbulence during the ferry flight. The spacecraft was lifted inside a large gantry-like device called the mate-demate device. The aircraft rolled underneath and the orbiter was lowered and bolted into place. The team simply reversed the process to remove the shuttle from the plane. Sometimes just getting the shuttle and aircraft ready for the trip could be a test in itself. NASA flow director Stephanie Stilson recalls the challenges the ferry flight team encountered in 2005 after Space Shuttle Discovery landed at Edwards at the end of the return to flight mission STS-114. And everybody thinks the desert, dry, no issues, no rain. Well, we had snow in the mountains, we had rain, we had lightning that actually struck the mate demate device, and we had locusts. So it was like everything that could possibly happen outside of our control happened. But once again, that just gave us a chance to show how we can react to changes and, and things that we're not expecting. But the toughest part of a ferry flight is keeping the shuttle safe from harmful weather or other conditions during flight. So a Pathfinder aircraft flies 100 miles ahead of the attached pair, making sure the flight path is safe and dry. You don't want to bring it through any turbulence, no visible moisture, there's some temperature limitations. And essentially we're the uh, the plane to make sure we don't bring the orbiter through there. So our job is to be very vigilant of uh, any changing weather conditions and to make sure that the orbiter is uh, brought on a safe flight path. There were 87 ferry flights throughout the space shuttle program, including flights for testing, delivery, orbiter upgrades, and of course, end of mission landings. Today, the shuttles are being prepared at Kennedy to go on public display at sites across the country. Atlantis won't need an aircraft to move to its new home at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. But Discovery, Endeavor, and the Test Orbiter Enterprise will each take one last ride. Discovery will be flown to Dulles International Airport in Virginia and then moved to the nearby Smithsonian udvar hazy Center. It will take the place of Enterprise, which will be flown from there to John F. Kennedy International Airport, and then on to the Intrepid Air, Sea, and Space Museum in New York City. Endeavor will be flown to Los Angeles International Airport before making its way to the California Science Center in Los Angeles. The bulky combination of orbiter and aircraft is unmistakable and usually attracts attention from onlookers on the ground as it makes its way across the sky. NASA plans to keep one of the modified 747s 
for its Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, or SOFIA, science program. But as the shuttles make their final ferry flights, space fans along the way may be able to catch a glimpse of the duo making one more pass overhead. Uh, and so that's a, a great thing to be able to do that. And then if we have any stops along the way, it's a chance for us to, to share the orbiter with the public in that area that most likely has never even seen a space shuttle that close.